Let's talk a little bit more about the clinical side of inflammation. You know, I've done videos talking about inflammation here and there pertaining to certain foods, but let's talk about what you can do when you go to the doctor and you want to test for inflammation and you want to see what's really going on in your body. We're not just talking about a little bit of bloating. We're not just talking about a little bit of water retention. We're talking about real inflammation, chronic inflammation that could be affecting your organs, could be affecting the way you feel, and ultimately could be affecting your disease state even when you don't really feel it. So I wanted to do this video so you know what to look for, so you know to go to the doctor and ask for specific tests. And I want to explain briefly at a high level what these tests do so you can truly understand what we are talking about when we're mentioning inflammation. Because the name implies that it's just swelling and bloating. But the thing is, there's way more to it than just that. You see, what actually causes inflammation at the cellular level is excess proteins being deposited into the blood from specific areas. So when it happens at a chronic level, you have additional proteins that are going into the bloodstream and they're causing inflammation. So you've got things like prostaglandins that trigger this. And I'll get to that a little bit later on in the video. So let's talk about three different tests that are used to identify inflammation. We're going to look at inflammatory markers. Now the first one is one called erythrocyte sedimentation rate or ESR. I know it's a mouthful to say, but it's actually a pretty simple process. You see, what they do when they test your ESR is they draw your blood and they combine that blood with a chemical that allows the red blood cells to separate from the plasma. So what's going to happen in this case and what they're going to look for is they're looking at the sedimentation rate, how long it takes for the red blood cells to fall and actually form sediment. Now what they're looking for specifically is specific forms of inflammation, specific types of proteins cause these red blood cells to bind together. And when those red blood cells bind together, they fall at a faster rate. So they're falling at a faster rate through the plasma and they're developing as sedimentation a lot faster. So they're actually measuring the rate at which your red blood cells fall. Now, what does this really mean to you? Well, it's telling you a lot about your inflammatory response in your body right now. If you're having those crazy amounts of red blood cells that are clumping together and falling very fast, that means your body's working really hard right now to fight inflammation. So that is a test that your doctor can run to give you a little bit more of an indicator. Now the next test is one that's pretty common and might be the most well known and that is your CRP or C-reactive protein levels. So you see when we're talking about inflammation we're talking about excess proteins anyway. Well the C-reactive protein is one specific protein. So it's produced by the liver and it's produced in excess by the liver when there is a chronic amount of inflammation in the body. Now the good thing with CRP is when you test for CRP and you have elevated markers of it, you definitely have an indicator that you have some inflammation going on in the body. However, it is not tied to one specific kind of inflammation. You see, there are so many different varieties of inflammation affecting so many different components of the body. All that the C-reactive protein level really tells us is that yes, we have an inflammatory response within the body. Now, research is kind of all over the place, but some of it is even showing that after hard workouts, an inflammatory response triggered by prostaglandins can actually make your C-reactive protein levels increase. So it's not the end-all be-all, but when it's combined with other tests and other kind of immunoglobulin tests, which I'll get to later in the video, you can start to pinpoint what's going on. Now, the third test that your doctor might run on you is something called a PV test or a plasma viscosity test. And what this plasma viscosity test does is it tests just that, the viscosity of your plasma. So when we look at ESR, that first test we talked about, the erythrocyte sedimentation rate, we are looking at how fast those blood cells fall or collapse. Well, in this case, we're sort of looking at the same thing, except we're looking at the resistance that is caused by the plasma based on how thick it is. Now, this particular test is kind of narrowed down to those with rheumatoid arthritis. So if you're having an inflammatory response or you're feeling like you have a lot of joint pain, you go to the doctor, they might test that PV level just to see if they can rule out rheumatoid arthritis. So PV is not always used across the board, but it's still one of those tests that when combined with C-reactive protein and combined with ESR can help pinpoint the issue of inflammation. Now when we look at all these tests combined, that is how we can start determining what is happening with someone, at least in the medical field. Now, I have to say, I'm not a doctor. I'm putting this video out there so that you can be educated, at least at a high level when you go to the doctor. So when they look at things like the C-reactive protein level, they can look at how quickly those C-reactive protein levels come back down when they start a specific treatment. So let's say they start a treatment for rheumatoid arthritis, and they see that your C-reactive protein levels dramatically drop after starting that treatment. 
Well, that is a solid indicator that that was the area that they needed to target. So that seed reactive protein level, since it responds so quick, it gives us a good estimate of how well we are combating inflammation or just the opposite, how fast we are being succumbed to inflammation. The next area I wanna talk about is an area of inflammation that's all over websites lately and we're starting to become a little bit more familiar with it or at least hearing the terms. I'm talking about the autoimmune system. I'm talking about the antibody response. I'm talking about autoimmune diseases and conditions and what actually causes those issues. Well, it comes back to, again, the immune system. But more specifically, it comes down to something called immunoglobulins. And that's a fancy way of basically saying antibodies. But we're talking about the immunoglobulins of IgG, IgA, and IgM specifically. Now, what these immunoglobulins do is they respond when something comes into our body that isn't really supposed to be there. You know, it could be a cold, it could be a flu, it could be a food that you have an intolerance to. But what these IgG, IgM, and IgA immunoglobulins tell us is they allow us to get a little bit more specific with what might be causing an issue. So let's back up a little bit and say you run some C-reactive protein tests. Let's say the doctor runs an ESR test. You start finding that you do have inflammation, but then upon further investigation, you start finding that you have higher responses with IgG or IgM. Well, the doctor can then start to pinpoint what might actually be causing the inflammation. Perhaps it's something in the case of Hashimoto's with your thyroid. Perhaps it's rheumatoid arthritis. Perhaps it's Lyme disease. The list goes on and on, but it allows you to start narrowing the process down a little bit. So at the end of the day, these immune responses, whether they're high or low, can signify different disease states. Now, again, I'm clarifying, I'm not a doctor. I'm not here to diagnose you with any of these markers. I'm just giving you the facts so that you can investigate a bit further. Now, lastly, let's talk about non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, NSAIDs, because people talk about them all the time and they think they get them a little bit confused with chronic inflammation and acute inflammation. So an NSAID, something like an aspirin or something like an Advil, anything like that that's gonna reduce inflammation. Well, what that does is that works on something called the COX enzyme. So it's the cyclooxygenase enzyme one and the cyclooxygenase enzyme two. What these enzymes do is they trigger the release of what are called prostaglandins. These prostaglandins are what cause that redness and that swelling when you get stung by a bee or when you get sore after a workout and you get swollen and you get a little bit inflamed. So those COX1 and 2 enzymes trigger the prostaglandins and that triggers the inflammatory response. Well, this can happen at a cellular level and this is essentially what triggers a lot of the antibody response, what triggers a lot of that C-reactive protein level. So you have to be cognizant of that. Now, a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory actually inhibits the COX1 enzyme from working. So basically, an aspirin or an Advil or ibuprofen tells your body to not release prostaglandins. So you can see how over time it might not be the best thing to continually take. Anyhow, I hope that this gives you a solid understanding of how inflammation works a little bit more at a high level rather than just how it can affect your gut, how it can affect your mood, how it can affect your brain. As always, keep it locked in here on my videos and I will see you in the next one.